Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Please like, comment, subscribe, share the video. It'll be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart, my peeps, my peoples. Peep Squad is in the building, baby. We're going to the top, to the top, to the top, baby. We're going to bring others with us. So please become a part of the notification squad, peep squad. Hit that notification bell, baby. Know each and every time I drop a video and tell me what's on your mind, baby. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Love and Hip Hop New York Season 10, Episode 11. I believe <laughs> this episode was kind of crazy. I was like, oh my goodness, what is going on? Yandy and Kimbella still going back and forth. I was like, it's just going, it's just way too much. Like they need to try to make amends or something. But it seems like Kimbella is feeling deep down in her heart and her soul that Yandy is not her friend no more. And Yandy was never her friend. And she felt like when she was poking jabs at you know, Chrissy, that that could have been her too as well. So she's thinking that Yandy's fake. She's feeling like Yandy's fake and never was her friend. And she didn't have her back from Jump Street because when Chrissy, you know, attacked her and, you know, Molly whopped her and all that other stuff, it was crazy. And then you have Yandy's talking about it to Jonathan on national TV. So she's feeling a certain type of way. Now she feels like she, she's kind of like realizing that we ain't friends. And then Yandy said, you deserve it, girl. You deserve it. After you call me a fake something, something, mm, mm, mm. I was like, it is going down between these two. It seems like Kimbella, she is here to win. She's here to stay. You know, she's going through floor closure. You know, her husband, Jewels, is locked up. She got the kids to feed to as well. And right now, she's on the show. And she showed up to that summer party, that jumper party, <laughs> that summer party. She sold up to that pajama jammy jam, baby. Because you know what? If... In, realist, in reality, she shouldn't even went. You know what I mean? Because, you know, everybody's there is really going to. They might be like, hi, hello, how you doing, Kimbella? But they're really on Chrissy's. Uh, they're really on, you know, Yandy's side. They ain't really feeling you like that. But she got to get her screen time. She got to get her play, baby. She, can't, she done came through. And Yandy's just tired of the situation. I was like, Yandy was holding her mew. And then she just get up. And then she demonstrated how Kimbella was attacked. And said that she deserved it. Lord have mercy. If you hear your friend say some shit like that, you'd be like, what? It's on and popping for real, for real. I was like, damn. And and you know, Kimbella feels like Yandy should have jumped in, or at least after the fight was over, after she got Molly whopped, maybe you know, Yandy should have jumped in and did something. I don't know what type of friends they are, but there's no way I'm going to see somebody that I love, somebody I'm close to, that is my road dog, that is my peep, my people. You know, that's my heart. You know, getting attacked. I mean, and brutally attacked too as well. If I'm gonna make sure it doesn't happen try to break the fight up before anything but you know i just want to be sitting back being a spectator because you know i would i would want somebody to have my back too as well and defend me so i would be hoping the person that i'm rolling with would defend me too as well so you better know who you chilling with who you hanging with because anything can pop off you can be the nice sweetest humble person in the world and you go to an event or a venue and somehow negativity will follow you and just you know you need your peoples for real for real so it is what it is but uh, Yandy ain't she don't be out here fighting like that and she was like I'm not gonna get Molly whopped on TV or anything else like that at all point blank period she was like you know this I can't I can't I, I can't do it so you have that situation and yeah Andy feels like, yo, Kimbella, the girl that you mad at me, but the girl that Molly whopped you was, you know, Chrissy. And then in hindsight, if you look at it, you know, Emily is still with Fab and he still be cheating on her. And he's involved in domestic violence situations with, you know, Emily recently. You know, they was at the courthouse together. You know, they was on TMZ recently, uh, maybe two years ago, whatever. But, you know, she's still in the same predicament, the same situation. She's still going through the same thing with fab but maybe he's much better maybe he treats her a lot better i don't know chances or not <laughs> so let's just get into the situation and jonathan letting us know that he done, he blew away a hundred and eleven thousand dollars and he a hundred and sixty thousand dollars he had that money in the bank at one point in time but he was out here partying like it was crazy he was doing the most and spending the most he blew through that money baby and then pills too as well he was out here he probably always was this a hundred and sixty thousand dollars. That's a lot of, that's a lot of yeehaw, yeehaw, hoo ha, and a lot to swallow for real, for real. So let's just get into it. So Jonathan's explaining the situation, how it went down, and how you know his nephew needs you know the surgery, or his legs are gonna get amputated too as well. That is so horrible. Hopefully this his nephew Derek get his 
you know, operation and everything works out because, you know, it's, it's being a kid difficult as it is. And then, you know, having this go on as a child and not understanding and seeing everybody else differently too as well. But one thing about Derek is he got support and he was so happy to see the people around him. And it was a good thing that Jonathan did bring his nephew on the show and get him some help because the councilman and the mayor they gave $5,000, baby. I was like, okay, so it's all, it's all good. And Jonathan lets them in on a little and I'm happy that Jonathan's able to disclose this information and say what he did wrong and what happened. You know, a lot of people ain't going to admit I blew $160,000 on, you know, to medicate myself because I was going through some things. So that's admirable of him to actually just even speak up and say it because a lot of people keep that a secret. And then he's telling the whole world for everybody to judge him. Go ahead, Jonathan. Jonathan, don't give a shit. <laughs> So, he gonna get that money back too as well. We got Mama Jones. Mama Jones in the building. You know, Mama Jones calling the Mama's Mamas on the reality TV show. Mama Jones was, you know, was, a, a, she was a punkash. She's selling punkash. She was rapping. She was doing the whole nine yards. She was even good on Marriage Boot Camp, but she has a lot of demons just like we all do. But it was good to see Mama Jones and her finger waves all popping. I like that little bow tie she got on. She still look good. You still got it. You still fire. And I can't believe you and Chrissy still don't get along. But in my opinion, I think Chrissy... Mama Jones and Jim Jones are getting that back together because they were, they started off on Love and Hip Hop New York together and then on top of that, they had their own reality TV show and then on top of that, they went to marriage boot camp. So they end up winning to get this back and they're doing it together. Whether they got to talk about each other or not, but her house burnt down a couple of years ago and now she's been staying in a hotel. I don't know how long she's been staying in a hotel. Has she been staying in a hotel for two years? She was like, I am sick of swimming in the pool and in jacuzzi and all that other shit. I'm ready to go home for two years and Jim has a foreclosure on his house she probably couldn't move into that house because God knows there's probably wasn't no heat no light no gas or whatever the case is you know the city done turn off the water stop picking up the garbage because the taxes ain't being paid so Jim Jones is building his mother a brand new house from ground up bay bay and it's going to be on and Chrissy is a designer and it seems like that's going to be a situation because Mama Jones and Chrissy ain't getting along allegedly. So Jim Jones is happy but he don't know she don't know who the interior decorator is. That is Mama Jones and um, she wants a red door baby. She wants a red door <laughs> and we get to see Olivia. She comes through with them cute nails and she got her ring on. She she got bling bling baby. She's up there with Tony Braxton ring. That's huge and Porsche ring. That's um that that's a stone baby. And we have she meets up with Yandy. Yandy lets her know that her and Kim Bella ain't friends no more. And Kim Bella got the nerve to be Chrissy's friend on top of that after Chrissy's the one that Molly whopped her and everything else. And then Olivia's co sign like, Oh, she really friends with Chrissy. I can't believe she's friend with Chrissy. Oh, uh, but didn't you just meet up with Chrissy? Wasn't Chrissy the first person you met up with Olivia? You're being a little bit two faced, but she's probably in shock that Chrissy <laughs> And, you know, Kim Bella is friends after that ultimate beatdown, <laughs> flawless victory, <laughs> fatality. <laughs> so, you know, um, and they're like, oh, yeah. And so, you know, Yandy's basically talking her mess like, and she's just mad at me because I read a post. Yes, you read that post, but you were shady with that post about, you know, Jim Jones' house being foreclosed on Chrissy and Jim's house because you said if you was managing him, he wouldn't be broke, and that's right around the time that you stopped managing him. He probably wouldn't have foreclosed on the house, because you probably would have made sure the bills were taken care of, because Yandy looks like she take care of the bills, pay the bills, and everything was all set. You ain't gonna catch her out there. There's no way. She always got a trick and a scheme, and somewhere, and also, she's real. She's authentic. She knows how to make money. She went to college, and, you know, she has a lot of experience. She deals with a lot of people with money, so in turn, you deal with money, money comes your way. So, you know, and also Yandy is an activist too as well. So we got to give Yandy that too. And that pink, them pink earrings are pretty baby. She look good. And so this is when now we have Olivia telling her that, you know, um, Miss Richie Dulles ain't shit. <laughs> he ain't good at all. He's low down. He stole. He, he took my money from me. I went to the publishing company. I went here. I went there. I went around the world. And she was like, why did you wait like five years? And Olivia was like, I didn't wait five years. I, I The next day, <laughs> she said she said it like the next day. I was immediately trying to get in contact with Rich and talk to him. I had my lawyer send him papers, but I don't know where he live at. I don't know where he stay. The dude flies around, move around. 
around like flies, birds, and bees, you know. And then Yandy was like, well, you're making it hard for me to defend my friend. You're making it hard for me to defend my friend, um... You know, and she was like, I can't serve him papers because his address is change and change and change. And then Yandy was like, well, mm, his phone number do always be changed. <laughs> and I was like, Yandy, Yandy was like, it's hard to defend my friend about this situation. And she was like, maybe it's something else. Maybe it's just a misunderstanding. Maybe money went somewhere else. Maybe he was paying for this. Maybe he was paying for that. Maybe he was paying for this, that, and this, and the other. So... Yandy's trying to, you know, pull Rich up out the hole, but Olivia said, no, it's not true because I did everything. I did the research. I know how much money I was supposed to get in the whole nine yards. Poor Olivia. That's probably why we didn't see it because she was hurt, betrayed, probably lost a little bit of love for the music. And But Rich said it's her personality. She never really wanted to show her personality or whatever, but it is what it is. So we get Miss Christy. She meets up with Jonathan and also Kim Bella, and they really hash a little situation situation out about Yandy being shady and you know she was like when I came into the room and to your event Jonathan it seems like you had no love from Kimbella so basically you know Chrissy is sticking up from Kimbella and saying that you know it seemed like there was no love in that room for her and these guys are supposed to be cool and she was like yeah Yandy did say something shady she can read a blog but then when she say if I was managing him he that probably wouldn't happen and that was shade they dropped it they got um Jonathan invites him to his to his um, nephew Derek's events and everything else like that, you know. And Kim Bella was like, "Well, you know, she said something, you know, talking. You know, I'm not gonna let that happen. You're gonna talk about somebody, but people just can't believe. Well, Jonathan and um, <laughs> Yandy can't believe that Kim Bella is cool with Chrissy." Because of what happened. But, you know, it's over with. It's over with. It's done with. There's nothing else she can do. She don't want to fight her again, too, as well. And then on top of that, you know, she kind of takes a little bit of blame for it. That she shouldn't have just walked in the room and said all that. I look, you know, that was way too much around girls that ain't her girls. Maybe one was in the room was her girl. But just to say, you know, you was with Fab or whatever amongst a girl and her girls. You know, somebody's going to catch feelings. She shouldn't have got beat down like that. Because in hindsight, Emily is still going through the same thing she was going through back then and today so Kim Bella and Jonathan gonna make it right they're gonna be cool Jonathan invites them to the jump a thorn the jump rope double dutch dunch <laughs> jump a thorn baby so they're doing a damn thing then we got Rich Dallas he goes sees his mama because his mama knows all and she's his accountant she's his management and he lets her know that you know guess who crawled up from out of out of the corporate olivia she's doing music i didn't even know she was still doing music or this and that i seen her in the studio and mama goes and she said that i owe her money i stole from her and mama was like no she owes you money she never paid a dime for anything she didn't put up no money for nothing and not and she's upset about december she's upset about december but well she can't be upset about december you know why because her job was to perform the song and that's what she got paid to do perform the song so when she went from show to show coast to coast <laughs> club bar <laughs> concert event that was her duckets right there you know so basically they're saying that she don't that she don't deserve any money and she owes them money and she robbed them and so basically rich has to go talk to cisco because cisco is the person that told her that rich dollars was stealing from her so what do you think is rich dollars stealing is he taking money people believe he is <laughs> what do you believe like lord have mercy so rich dollars is gonna go meet up with cisco mama said be ready because this ain't gonna be a nice conversation you gonna have with cisco you know cisco's always involved in somebody's shit always messing with somebody's orders just like rich does they're one and the same but it seems like after the conversation rich was putting money in cisco pocket then we have samaya reese she comes through and you know she comes through. She looks nice. You know, she's a millionaire. You know, selling tea, doing a damn thing. It says her net worth is $4.5 million. So she's not in the broke house, baby. And Jonathan's nephew gets, you know, $5,000 from the councilman and the mayor. So they made out. Chrissy says she wasn't going because she didn't want to be aggravated. Same thing. Kim Bella should have not went to that sleep-a-thon or that sleepover or that um, pajama jammy jam. She should have stayed her ass at home with them kids, but I know she got to get that money and she got to eat, so she gonna do what she needs to do because she ain't gonna be boring or be phased out, so she got drama with Yandy, and plus she's hurt by, she she feels like she's hurt by Yandy because Yandy don't go her back, and Yandy's just like, come on. Like, you always talking about me. 
<laughs> so we have that situation. And then Chrissy wants to know if Mama Jones going to know that, it, that she decorated the house. Jim said, well, I hope so. So they ain't getting along. Chrissy ain't, ain't talked to Mama Jones in a long time. It's like they're still going through this, but they be getting that bag, though, baby. Mama Jones made an appearance. She's doing a little blog and a podcast. And then we got, you know, Peter Gunz. He's in the building. He is the, you know, he's going to be holding it down. He's the mediator in the meeting when it comes to rich dollars and when it comes to cisco and basically <laughs> peter's like yo did you did you tell olivia did you go manage olivia did you make money with olivia did you tell olivia that rich dollars was stealing from her and you know basically peter said that's some snake shit that's low down you're always doing something rich and then <laughs> and then um cisco's like no nah, that's not true so you know cisco he will lie he's a snake <laughs> he got a different girl every day of the week and he'd be playing games all the time so basically he was like yeah you know i took olivia around i took her to and rich i was like yo you took her to universals to the to the publishing offices you don't think i knew that you think i know that so you think um cisco cares that you knew that he was out here trying to get money with olivia he was trying to get his bag too as well he was trying to get put on and then rich dollars was like then all you have to do you were supposed to tell me like i put like he rich was acting like you know um they was talent scalping together and gonna be cross sharing orders and this and and um rich is and Cisco was supposed to let Rich know what was going on and what's happening with the situation. But, you know, they was kind of like working together a little bit. That's what it seems. And that's how the way Rich made it seem. And then Rich was like, yo, listen, you done took the girl here. He was like, I took <laughs> and then and then um Cisco was like, I took her to different places. I took her all over the place. He said, I took her everywhere. I ain't no denying it. He was like, I messed up. I should have told you that she came back into town. She was talking about course. And he was like, I was trying to help out the girl. I was trying to help her out. But Cisco is being a snake when it comes to rich dollars. But then he's also being a friend to Olivia because he said he feels sorry for Olivia or he thought he could make a buck off of her or he thought he can get into them drawers. That's what he thought. So basically to sweeten the deal to say rich is a thief, what will be icing on the cake because why would olivia lie about it well we got to give olivia props she getting married she's engaged and she got a storyline because rich done stole money from her and she's also working with you know um fresher that's out here doing the most and him and richard be beefing so she came in with a storyline so you know cisco is like but i ain't never said you stole man you know one thing i could say all the crap i want to say about you but you ain't never a thief you ain't never been a thief you ain't never been this you ain't never been that so now we're gonna see what's gonna happen with the situation because they agreed to have a meeting with olivia and olivia is gonna go face to face toe to toe you know so is it cisco or is it somebody else close to rich that told her that rich is basically thinking that she's lying and he's not going to beat down a dead horse because um cisco said he never said it so they're gonna meet up with olivia to see what happens then we get to the party situation and baby it's going down with the party samari she came on to be messy and yes she did she's they played truth to dare why would you ladies want to play truth dare or double dare so she said dare to you know yandy and ask yandy is there somebody in this room that you got attention when i was like lord have mercy and then everybody's just everybody knows what's up these are all yandy's people jen is cool with yandy sin is cool with yandy and so my is cool with yandy but jen and you know the groupie beat down crazy lady and um sin and jonathan are her people so cambella is basically on the outside because she's high and by with everybody really and jonathan a little bit a little bit more closer to but not really she knows at the end of the day yandy come first and no who so she put herself in that situation so she's in this situation and then you know cambella was like yeah cambella's like raising her hand and shit like it's me you're talking about me that you got a problem with or whatever so now we got that situation and it's just like damn i just can't believe cambella came through and she went there like lord have mercy why did you go to the party why did you do that and so um 
Cambella basically speaks her mind. Like, basically, I didn't like the things that you said. Like, when you was reading off the blogs or whatever. And it's something that I've been through, too, as well. Because, basically, we know Cambella went through foreclosure, too, as well. And then she was, like, your smart comments. And it made her just feel like you was never her friend. Because, especially, you was talking about my my pool nanny. Me getting molly walked by Chrissy and all this other stuff. So, she's upset. And you didn't have my back with that Emily situation. You watched me get beat down. You didn't have my back. You didn't help me. You didn't do nothing because if that was me I would have jumped in and I would have helped you because you know why because that's why you always call me Yandy when you got a problem when there's a beef or something you want somebody to fight for you I come through and that's the time where Kim Bella was supposed to fight you know Mendici's baby's mother she's supposed to show up and scare the ladies that come through and then Yandy act like she didn't know what happened you know they could have worked that out off camera and just had that shit dead it but I guess Cambella is coming to a realization where she feels like Yandy ain't never been her friend. And, you know, Yandy feels very disappointed because she feels like she was her friend. But I ain't getting beat down for you. <laughs> and so Cambella's all up in Yandy's face and everything else. And then Yandy done jumped and was like, you mad at me? But I, you, you don't want to have your vagina. Everything else showing you was getting beat up and everything else like that. Then she jumps on Jonathan and she replays it and acted out. That's low down and dirty. That is a... Uh, it is what it is. Kimbella was talking her mess and then Yandy was ready to play with Kimbella and get her upset. And so she reenacted what happened to Kimbella, which is dirty, baby. But Kimbella's calling her out, but Kimbella's actually opening up to tell her this is how I feel about the situation. And Yandy was like, you just doing too much woe is me, too much victim, but you're over there with Chrissy. But yeah, I should have jumped in and helped you, but yet you chilling with her, so you ain't mad at her no more. So why are you mad at me? Because I had a bond with you. You're supposed to be my girl, my ride or die, my chick, my side by side, my front, my left, my back. You were supposed to have my back all the way. You're supposed to be my legs and my arms. Do what I can't do when I'm detained by like Chrissy <laughs> so so we have this situation I was like Lord have mercy too much going on and then Kim Bella she gets up and she throws her drink in Yandy's face and then Yandy said you deserve it Lord have mercy you deserve it <laughs> so and then it went on and then Yandy jumped up and she kind of like had a bottle or a glass in her hand or the champagne bottle or something and she pushed towards you know Kim Bella but security came and it was yelling and screaming Sim was jumping and talking about still Stop it, Kim Bella. Stop it. Be quiet, son. Stay in the background and be noise because Jonathan made this shit happen. Jonathan knew that it was going to be popping. He probably got on the phone with Kim Bella and, con and convinced her to come. It's going to be lovely dubby. He know damn well these ladies don't rock with Kim Bella. And he don't even rock with Kim Bella because every time he he's always dissing her and talking about her outfits, talking about her hair, talking about her size. He just always dissing her. So, you know, she went into the lion's den. But luckily, security's all in the room. So, you know, they gonna sleep there at night security there look at all that security like security was on deck security be on deck now for real for real so you guys tell me what you think about the episode i was like lord have mercy kimbella and yandini's counseling together therapy